I consider myself a pretty lucky person. I get to sit down in front of a camera on Wednesday and talk about cryptocurrency and Solana and NFTs and what are the next big projects and things like that. These are things that I'm super, super passionate about. And it's it's just a thrill to me that I can sit down, tap a button and just blah, you know, word vomit into a microphone about what I think is going on. And one of the cool things about this position, or should I say one of the lucky things about this position, is that very frequently I get to sit down with major players in the space and other major projects in the space and talk about what's going on. Now, lots of times these conversations happen before a mint as I'm trying to explore what a project's doing. But every now and then I get to follow up with a project and see how things are going for them and where they're headed next. Today, that was the case with Jungle Cats. If you watched my previous video on Jungle Cats, you know a little bit about what they're about and what their long-term vision is. But now that they've minted and they're out there in the real world, it's time to focus on what's coming next. Let's also talk to Jungle Cats about where I think Solana is and the NFT ecosystem is and where we can go in the long run. So that's what today's video is all about. I got to sit down with the Jungle Cats team and learn more about how things are going for them and where they're headed next. And then, of course, talk about the Solana NFT ecosystem in general. So check it out. All right, so I am sitting down with Pack Leader. It is Wednesday, the 27th, right? And it's just exciting to have the time to talk to you, man, because this has been... The Jungle Cats is something that I've legitimately been fired up about since for, for a long time, really since I first saw the artwork, and then we had our initial discussion. So you guys minted. It was a very successful mint. A lot of people tried to participate in it. The price action since then has been good, but more interestingly is the fact that you guys are continuing to build. Kind of take us through how Mint Day went and how things have been going since then. Yeah, so Mint Day was a, uh, a mix of emotions, to say the least. So we brought down Radium, uh, <laughs> which, is a, uh, which is cool, but also um, hate to have the fact that a lot of our, our core interested holders and and the people that we call our originals or our OGs were not able to get in. Nobody on the team was able to get in. Um, it was just, the demand was crazy. We were about 2000% oversubscribed. So I think that's reflected in our current pricing. We're about two X from our, our initial mint and the remainder of projects in the space haven't really been holding their floors. So um, the demand is definitely reflected uh, from the, from the mint really sucks that, you know, essentially the strongest project or platform on Solana as it sits was not able to handle the demand. But that I think is something they're buffing out and working on for things going forward. Yeah, I mean, I think it was a good test um, because this was a very, very highly anticipated project. And like you said, it, the demand is still reflective in today's pricing. One of the most interesting things about that, I think, can actually speak to a testament of the quality of the artwork and kind of where the community is. If you actually look at the gap between the floor and the higher rarity items, the higher rarity furs, the gap is actually pretty small. And I think that's because, you know, like the common objects, the common cats still look amazing. Uh, and for the most part, everybody like there's not this huge degen influx of people who are like bidding up the ultra rare things everybody's just happy to be a part of the pack right now do you kind of feel that within your community yeah so i've definitely been a ton of or been involved in a ton of different communities uh this one has been the most positive and i try to reiterate that with our community frequently just because it's it's a joy to work with these guys like everybody is out talking about jungle cats, happy to show off their jungle cats, you know, flex it in the way that people like to do with their NFTs, but it's not in the way of like a, a negative or a toxic. It's, it's inviting. They, we want, we want the pack to grow. We want more minds that are helping us to figure out what the next steps are. And, and community is definitely a, a centerpiece for the things that we're working on. 
That's a great way to put it. I, I Now that you said it that way, I'm thinking about like my interactions on Twitter. I see a lot of people rocking the PFPs. They're great. They're very PFPable, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, like they frame up nicely. They catch your eye when you're thumbing through Twitter. Um, my, my The ones that I went for are, you know, I, I tend to gravitate towards ones that are cleaner rather than more rare. Uh, and I I really, really love my leopard that I got. The, the <laughs> leopard fur one. The, with uh, all that stuff that. It's so clean. Yeah, the community has my wallet now. I doxed it to them, and they they have very clearly seen my love for leopards as well. I, I think yeah. I have 12 of them myself. So. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so, uh, so now that you got past Mint Day, take me through what have you done since? What's been going on? So we definitely we kicked off what we called the jungle hunt that was the big thing for the last week and that's going to be continuing to go on i think in perpetuity but we're also going to be adding to it as we bring on our leaders of the community we call pride leaders but essentially what it is is different culture different marketing different opportunities for community members to come in talk about the project do it on twitter with our our tag g roar um, and essentially be entered for a chance to win a lion in doing so. So everybody is out inviting people in. One of the things that we're doing is invite a new friend to the NFT space and explain to them NFTs and, and you'll be entered for a chance to win a lion as well. That's another initiative. So bringing people into the ecosystem. Um, one we're going to kick off soon that's still in the, the storming and forming phases is the, the, uh, bounty program and that's going to be led by one of our pride leaders to to bring some devs into the jungle dow and and bring some really cool new technologies and initiatives that we're not currently seeing anywhere else in the space that's really cool i so is there anything about that that you can share i mean i just i not that you have to but I, i'm kind of interested now you you dangled some bait in the water, and I want to know, like, what? Well, what is it? <laughs> well, I I can dangle a little more, but I can't I can't give you the whole pie. I can give you a little slice off the crust. Um, okay. We are currently sponsoring the Hacker House for Breakpoint. Ooh. Um, so our plan is to work with the guys that are are working on that house and to set up the bounty program around bugs, fixes, new techs, and reward those those bounty programs from our treasury, both with lions as well as some Solana for devs coming into the jungle DAO and essentially helping us to build the platform larger and larger, basically an ecosystem within an ecosystem, a very inviting one. Okay. That's really cool. You, you mentioned the jungle DAO and I've seen the jungle DAO, you know, all over the place on Twitter, on your website, discord, uh, I've even seen you're forming strategic alliances with other projects like Cyber Gang, where they've got an attribute. This is so cool. I think that they're doing this, that they've got this attribute where every time it trades on their secondary, they are going, it, and it looks kind of like a jungle cat's face. It's going to contribute to the jungle DAO. So t tell me more about, the formation of the Jungle Dow. Where is that at, and what do you have in store for the Jungle Dow? How will that be structured? How is that all going to work? Yeah, so we have two different wallets. We have the Jungle Dow wallet and the Project Development wallet. But speaking strictly on the Jungle Dow wallet, the way that we kind of structured it was like this: we we built the platform, myself and Key. But we built the platform with the idea in mind that eventually it would be handed off to the Jungle Dow. So now what we have is the Jungle DAO essentially owns the Twitter, owns the Discord, owns everybody, all of the propositions and the wants to join the DAO. And in order to come in and use the DAO, whether it be as a launch pad, you need technical help, any of the 10 different reasons, 20 different reasons you could want to use the DAO, we ask you to incentivize the DAO in some way to contribute to the project and also to be a lion holder. So we give priority to those two basic checks and through the community's decision, they decide what projects they want us to bring in. So we we actually opened up a form for people to submit. We got about 110 submissions in the last like four days since we opened the form. And 
the community is going through and our grower team six, which is essentially one of our pride leaders leading that, that group is evaluating those projects and saying, okay, we would like to bring these guys in. This is what they propose. What does everybody think? Okay. So wait, you dropped another key term there. I think, but you said it was grower team six and pride leader. What, tell me more about that. Yeah. So I, I should probably explain that further. Um, we, okay. So we have what we're calling pride leaders and the vote is actually starting today. Pride leaders are essentially going to be leaders for the DAO, so the community engagement piece of the project. Um, each pride leader is going to be slotted to run a different part of the project, whether that be technical implementations, whether that be evaluation of different projects coming into the DAO, marketing, like handling the billboards that we're putting together, and I can touch on that in a minute. But every pride leader is gonna be expected to contribute and essentially operate as a, a crossover between a community manager and a moderator and be voted in by the community to help drive new initiatives using the, the funds in the DAO. Okay, so pride leaders are basically kind of like elected representatives who, had, or who spearhead different portions or functions of the entire project. Yes, exactly. Okay, gotcha. And now that the DAO has at least what you're what we've been describing up to this point, that one of the arms of the DAO is almost like I don't want to say maybe an incubator, but kind of like a launch pad for new projects who want to partner with the jungle DAO. They now, as long as they have these two pieces of criteria met to at least to earn priority, they can then apply to partner with the DAO and upon the community's vote then there's kind of this symbiotic relationship between other projects in the ecosystem and jungle cats. This is kind of fascinating because I, I'm trying to think about where I've seen anything else like this. Like you hear about one project helping scratch another project's back, but I've never actually seen it where the community gets to make the choice. Yeah. So we actually, we have two processes, right? We have an internal process where somebody can apply for, say they want to stand up a certain pool to allow incentivized staking for jungle cats holders. That person internally could go and request a contribution from the DAO in order to stand up those processes. We also have the external, which is more like the incubator or the launch pad, as you were just saying, which is a project that's already establishing themselves on Twitter, has their website up and they're, they're preparing to mint. They can submit to be evaluated as well. Okay. So this, so, okay, so we've been really talking about the external process up till this point. Should we talk about the internal and tell me more about that? The state? Yeah, I mean, it's, so the basis for all is even when the external projects come, like Saba, uh, we ask them to have a line so they can come talk to the DAO to themselves. We don't have to relay all the projects. We don't know enough about the project to tell every specific detail that projects are working on. But the internal process is more like, community members that have an idea to directly build something under the jungle DAO. So whether that be a yield farming protocol, whether that be some billboards down in NYC that they want to build, something like that, that they go and they request the DAO money in order to do it specifically for jungle DAO. Now the external processes are if you're another project that wants to use the marketing or the, the discord or any other piece of the jungle DAO to support a different project. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. That's fascinating. So I I want to dig into this more. Are you guys actually working on developing DeFi products or putting up a billboard in NYC? Uh, both, yeah. So we had a meeting with Marinade uh, yesterday and we're working on one of the first incentivized pools for DAO. So instead of people in our community just holding on to Solana, what you're going to be able to do is stake your Solana into Marinade, get that 7% APR they offer, and then again, lend it through the Jungle Cats website. And when you do the both layers of a standard DeFi layer is what I refer to it as, a portion of that is going to go to benefiting the DAO almost in a liquidity mining program. So explain like I'm five essentially is you get APRs and the DAO gets APRs for staking your Solana. Wow. Okay. So if people were going to stake it anyways, 
earning a yield, they could do the exact same thing that they've always done, but one extra little step, and then the Dow will actually earn some yield from that. Yeah, That's, it's not even entirely an extra step, right? It's just where you do it. Yeah. Uh, it's on Jungle Cats IO instead of going to say Soul Farm or doing it on Sunny, you just do it on our website. That's a, okay. So are you guys like how is is there an ETA on that sounds like it would take forever to implement? <laughs> no, it's it's not terribly hard to implement. I mean, it's already documented how to stand up these these pools. We have a chat going with Marinade and I'd expect it probably in the next couple of weeks. In the next couple okay. So <laughs> it's like before Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Okay. Well, I know what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> not financial <laughs> advice. Do your own research. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but okay. The underlying idea is, you know, we we talk about a lot of projects talk about growing the ecosystem, and this is, you know, one way that not only benefits the ecosystem, it benefits our holders. Like a lot of people, I would say 98% of our our holders are just interested in NFTs and have never done anything in DeFi. But once you get to the point that you, you're able to make these 10% APRs a year with no risk just on, you know, USDC. Mm -hmm. um, that it's self-explanatory that they're going to be more involved in the system. And, and that genuinely does grow the ecosystem. I, I think in our initial conversation, you followed the same path as me. Um, we actually started out in Polygon DeFi. We yeah. jumped over to Solana DeFi, and then we discovered Solana NFTs. Yeah, I've been so I've been in DeFi since Yiffy. So I I've been I've been very involved. It's it's such a powerful tool for people yeah. to control their own money. And you actually in doing it start to recognize the the systems that are available to banks that aren't really available to you, like collateralizing and, and all these different lending protocols, and you realize how far your money can actually go when you take the time to understand it. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's that's actually why I I made a YouTube video on like you it's called you need to learn DeFi right now. Oh, I watched it. I love your stuff, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> but yeah. that's I mean it's yeah I, I I do I see that opportunity. You know the you know again not financial advice. Do your own research. Do what's best for you and your family. Yeah. But you know I look at I looked at my savings account for the longest time, which was holding USD cash, and earning 0.4 percent. And then I look at stable coins, which are the equivalent of USD cash, mm -hmm. and they're earning 10, 15, 20%. I'm like, what, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah, <laughs> no, on, on Tulip single, like even before they put up their, their second layer solution that is coming before end of year, right now you can get 17% on USDC for a single or a single lend. Like that's, mm -hmm. you don't even have to layer it to get that amount of money. Yeah. It's insane. So. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think, okay, so that's fascinating. You might be the only NFT, in a, in, at least to my knowledge right now, that is uh, evolving outside of the NFT ecosystem. You're actually developing DeFi products that benefit your DAO. Yeah, and so the plan is when we have, like, we have multiple devs in the jungle DAO currently, and one of them, I, I had this idea, it was actually mine, but I, I floated it out to a few of them. And the idea is they come and they say, hey, I need 15 Solana to stand this up. And we it's almost like a grant program. You know, the, oh. Dow, the Dow votes on it and we do it, you know? Okay, okay. No, okay, so, that, I mean, that's amazing. That's fantastic. Did, you mention something about a billboard. What's up with that? Yeah, uh, so this is a, another kind of grant program. So one of our, one of our guys is really big into digital marketing. Um, has done these billboards all over the place. He said, hey, there's the NFT NYC event coming up November 1st through the 4th, I believe it is. Um, one thing I'd really like to do is build a billboard and put it up on the NASDAQ billboard down in Times Square. Oh. Uh, and I said, absolutely. Um, we would definitely stand behind that. And so that's another grant program. You know, that's, that's, he says, hey, we need to stand up this billboard. It's going to cost me X amount of money to put it together and X amount of money to run it. And we vote on it and we do it. Is So the, is it just going to be a picture of a jungle cat? It's going to be 10 different jungle cats that kind of cycle through. And it's going to have a QR code that says now available for purchase on FTX. And you'll be able to jump in directly for, well, FTX US, let me be clear, FTX yeah. US. 
they, they ask me to be very clear if I ever talk about it that it's FTX US. Yeah, yeah, I, I understand that's important. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Okay. Wow, that's fantastic. That's even growing the the centralized exchange ecosystem as it's starting to bud, right? Yeah, exactly. That's fantastic. Okay, cool. I, I've noticed actually through your Twitter that you've had some relatively big name people picking up some some lions too. Oh yeah. So we had um Peter Hollins, who he's such a great guy. He's a he's a friend and I'm I'm meeting with him on Friday. Uh he saw the project completely organically. I didn't I didn't even send anything to him, but he owns the uh the patent for Lion King. So he as far as validation and approval goes, I I don't think I need any more of it as far as <laughs> the lions. But, um, with that being said, we also we got Ice Knife in, we got Immortal, we got Embessa, we got Meet Kevin. All of them are Jungle Cats holders, and and that's that's really exciting for us. Hoping to you know do something more visibly down the line with each of them, but but yep. they've all you know publicly been involved with Jungle Cats, which is cool for us. Yeah. That's fantastic. Uh, I mean, and it's true because w when you say things like, you know, these people who have relatively nice reach, when they find you organically, um, it goes back to one of our very first conversations that we were just having about how the community has been inviting. They've really emanated positive vibes throughout the entire ecosystem, um, which is great because you don't see that. Every, especially, you know, when, when the markets are down, people are really upset and, and you see a lot of negative sentiment, but not the Jungle Cats community. Um, I, I can't really say that, but for maybe one or two other projects, it's been fascinating. Yeah, I mean, it's not to say that that people aren't concerned given the ecosystem, but from our position, so we, we started a week ago and I consider our real start, you know, right after the Mint and that's that's to me when the project can actually get going. And we had 1,980 listings after the mint were down to 1,260. So people are definitely, there's a ton of demand on the cats and, and not only, you know, to flip them, but people are taking them and holding them in their wallets. So I, I think people forget about that in general is that like any project that mints with success, like I don't want to say any project, but like any worthy project that meant those first three weeks are pretty choppy as people start to shake out and give way to the long-term holders. Mm -hmm. The fact that you're seeing a 33% reduction in supply, which was already pretty limited. Your supply was just over like 5,500, right? Yeah, 5,585. So just the fact that you've already shaken out like 33% of your supply I would fully expect that kind of trend to continue until you reach like this natural low level. And that's when, you know, price action really starts to take off. And again, that's not, that's not specific to the jungle cats. That's just how good projects do it. That's just what happens. So I, I guess that kind of begs the question, like, what are you seeing in the Solana NFT ecosystem or Solana in general right now? And where do you think we're headed? What is not necessarily asking for price predictions or anything, but just what's your feel about the sentiment and how the jungle cats are contributing to this and everything? Honestly, I, so the, the market took a huge pullback where people are, are interested in, in moving money into Solana and moving money more specifically into Bitcoin. Um, for me, I'm exuberant. I, I've added to my positions for other blue chip projects that I, I want in the long term. Like I bought another ape this last week. Me too. Um, I am a bit blown away that people are dropping their positions right now in, in blue chip NFT projects. Obviously this last like four days has been a lull, but to me, we're, we're essentially at an impetus point where I see two huge balls of money coming towards NFTs. One, the ball of money that's coming from gaming. Gaming, I think some really big projects are going to start here before end of year. And some of them are even going to implement, like potentially Star Atlas by Q2 of next year. So there's that huge ball of money. And there's also the huge ball of money that's coming from Coinbase NFT going live. So we have FTX that is already offering direct on rails for FTX US. 
Yeah, FTX US. <laughs> Thank you. Um, that is already offering direct on rails for for people that are new to NFTs, and then we're also going to have Coinbase. So the two largest US based exchanges are are going to be able to. You're going to have direct on rails. So I we have both of those coming. I I believe Coinbase is going to be end of year before end of year. And and we're seeing a, a lull in prices. I've I've been committing capital to scooping things up both in jungle cats and outside of it. I, I have two soul in my wallet right now for that exact same reason. <laughs> I yeah. I have I have literally just like bought the dip. Yeah. Because I, I think like you, and I also see, you know, maybe as a short term play, again, not financial advice, do your own research, um, do what's best for you and your family, don't gamble your money on risky assets, blah, 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 blah. What I also see happening is this people rotated capital out of NFTs to catch the Bitcoin and soul bull run. And once that goes sideways, I think people are going to take profits and rotate back into NFTs because that's where the dip is right now. Yeah, even just a, a short term, like people don't understand illiquidity works both ways. You know, the, the illiquidity on the way down, people are going to keep on listing in. But on the way up, when we have those gaps of one to two soul, on floors, you know, once we break back into the levels that we've seen for geckos, that we've seen for apes, and that I expect to see for jungle cats, mm -hmm. it, it's not a one-way equation. Like it, it, it breaks continually. Like I, I was looking at the apes, and they've got probably, I'll say, like fifteen sitting on the floor, and then after that, they segment by like two soul, then another two soul, mm -hmm. and, and as people chop those floors up, they're illiquid going up too. Exactly. They get razor thin because of a high concentration at the floor. So as soon as as soon as a run starts, as soon as one person comes through and sweeps, it's it, it's on fire. Right. Yeah, <laughs> like, absolutely. And, and that's why, like, I added to my eight position this week and um, I, I'm kind of whittle. I'm trying to whittle down all of my rare positions in an attempt to accumulate more floor. Like I've been very overweight in rares across several projects for a long time now and uh, i would like to actually move some of my rares not all of them because i have an attachment yeah, to some of them. Yeah, exactly you can't sell all of the rares like some of the like my leopard apes i've got some that you you would have to offer me multi millions to get it all out of my hands and it's definitely not worth that like those are yeah. those are my babies man a exactly <laughs> like i i am not interested in selling my my jungle cats not one bit right now um yeah. especially with the, the way it's already moving and the supply has been reducing of the jungle cats um but i have some some blue chips some others that are rares and other nft projects where i would like to move them in order to sweep the floor uh, yes. because I see a huge opportunity there right now. Yeah, one of the one of the things for us is it's it's we're working on a ton of things. I think if you actually look at the project you would say holy crap, like if if you take the time to look into it, we're working on more things than other people. Mm -hmm. Our big things, these things take time, right? Yeah. Like it's not going to be done in a week. I I built multiple robust marketing campaigns and I'm building a like Jungle Cats is my baby. I've, I've, <laughs> I've done a lot of things in the space, but I'm I'm taking real care of this project to make sure that it's done correctly. So well, it's and that's that's where I want to go next is in our first video in our first conversation. You know, I talked a lot about metaverse integration. Like, I know that's going to take a really long time because somebody has to build the metaverse first. Yeah, but we exactly. see we, we see that happening kind of right now don't we and tell me where you fit in now and where you're going to go with that yeah so there's there's the projects that are i'll call them halfway to their metaverse right like tower like we're looking to pick up a penthouse and tower we're being patient with it just because the the market has been giving us opportunities if you're patient mm -hmm. so we're looking to we're, we're eyeing up two different floors there without disclosing that because I don't want people to speculate on and front run us, but one of them is a penthouse and then two other two other floors on top of that um, that are on, on our radar. Uh, we have Soulsteads that we're gonna keep in the DAO wallet and all these things are gonna be in the DAO wallet. So they're gonna be hopefully eventually fractionally owned by all of the community members. But the I, I call these the, the midway metaverse projects, right? They're not the the big kahuna that's coming, but they they are projects that we're already getting involved in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I think, and I mean, I, we can kind of, you know, address the elephant in the room. I think Star Atlas is going to play a huge part of the metaverse. Yes, absolutely. Um, and, I, you know, of course, it, we, we're we all kind of just waiting. <laughs> you know, they've given us <laughs> yeah, a yeah. lot of great info um, and some interesting teasers. The trailer that they dropped was sick. Uh, but it, is that still, like, I, I think I mentioned it. We talked a little bit about it, like, imagining a 3D world with our cat and our, our mane billowing out. Is that still a thing? Yeah, that happens absolutely. Someday? So we're still in the Interstellar Alliance um, where I think everybody's just, it's a waiting game, right? It's what, For people who are listening and don't know, what is the Interstellar Alliance? So the Interstellar Alliance is going to be the combination of a lot of different blue chip projects on Solana, like the SMBs, the D-Gen Apes, the Rogue Sharks are all a part of it, as well as the Jungle Cats. And they've already been allocated land and told they're allocated land inside of Star Atlas um, and we're basically going to be coming together to go into the quote unquote danger zone to mine for resources and and almost like a real pay t- or play to earn economy. So is this a benefit for your DAO members is a way to put it? Absolutely. So the the idea is we all work together on it and then the Interstellar Alliance allocates land to the most active and most beneficial to the Interstellar Alliance uh, NFT projects. Hmm. Okay. Now I actually, like, I see the imagination running wild. Yeah, okay. exactly. There's, there's so many different ways I could take that conversation, but the, yeah. the general basis is we're not going to build a play to earn game. I, I think many of them are going to flop when they lose users to these massive mm-hmm. metaverse projects. There's money to be made in those in the short term, but we're again, targeting long term. Yeah, no, I I couldn't agree more. Um, I, I, no, I'm not going to go down that road. I couldn't agree yeah. more. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so that's really fascinating. Uh, let's. I want to talk about one other thing real quick that I think is important. It's on your website. It's on your roadmap, and that's the lionesses, the airdrops. Oh yeah. So we're doing a lot of different airdrops. Some of the so the lioness is coming in November. Uh, we we actually put up a tweet today saying, just for your guys' awareness, if you want to be eligible for the airdrop, your your lines can't be listed because when they're listed, they're in Solana Art's wallet, and we're going to be blacklisting that wallet so that you know half of our lionesses don't end up there. Um, <laughs> but the uh, so we put that up, and we've got some other airdrops coming as well. I can't disclose those until they're finalized. Neither do I really want to. I want our holders to benefit, not the people that are trying to flip the flip the lions. So yeah. we, we've got some other really cool things coming in November leading up to that lioness as well. So that's, you got some cool stuff happening in November at, with the lionesses alone, because we know there's a breeding mechanic with cubs. That's actually really freaking cool. I, I, you know, every, like a lot of people, I don't want to say everybody, not even most people, not even most projects, a few projects out there have some sort of like fusion mechanic, but uh, done in this way as part of kind of like a lore with lions breeding with lionesses. I haven't seen that before. And I think that's really, really fascinating. Now, as a reminder to the viewers, November is on Monday. Um, so it's yeah. uh, it's happening. It not happen. We don't know exactly the date that it's happening at, but starting on Monday, it's November. You're now in the red zone. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Pay attention, essentially. Yeah. Okay. Fascinating. Awesome. All right. So you guys, I, I, you know, this is one of the most impressive things about a project. I actually tweeted about this last night that uh, one of the things that you should look for if if you really want to be one of these people who buys a project and wants it to be the next board Ape Yacht Club, right? mm-hmm. the next where the floor is six digits and they're at Christie's selling for millions. The thing that separates them from other projects is you jump in their Discord and almost no one is talking about the floor. Instead, what they're talking about is building. Yeah, exactly. So you need to be not financial advice. If you're going to buy a Jungle Cat, we need active community members. We need people that bring things that we don't currently have and want to build, you know? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And the fact that you're, I think this is probably the most fascinating part and where I was going with that 
is you're trying to invite people in uh, who just want to be a part of building the entire ecosystem. We see that now with like the internal and external DAO communications where we're trying to, or you're trying to, I guess I'm part of the DAO. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm, a, I'm a holder. So, <laughs> so what we're trying to do is we're trying to actually, you know, incentivize and jumpstart growth in other NFT projects, but also the DeFi ecosystem. Yeah. And, and give people an ability to launch using community, just using our community. I think, that to me is not just a project building, but the entire project building. Everybody who's participating in the Jungle Cats, both the actual devs, the marketing team, but also the DAO in the community, they're building and also building for Solana. Yeah. That that to me yeah. is a difference. That to me is a big difference maker. Yeah. As a long term holder. Yeah. The big thing for us again is everybody wins if we grow the ecosystem. So we don't, we're not, we haven't to date ever, you know, competed with another project. We, we've only cooperated and we've got some cool stuff coming up with Rogue Sharks currently that holders are involved, you know, in both of our projects and we're going to reward that. It's all, it's all cooperation and, and, and building together. It's not competition for us. Well, I'm also a very happy Rogue Shark holder. So there's yeah. winning well, across the board. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. So a rising tide lifts all ships, right? Exactly. That's what we're trying to say here. Yeah. Um, and and I, I think maybe one of the most important things to me personally is what you kind of mentioned earlier. I wanted to wrap up with this. And that's that you're incentivizing people to bring in normies. Yeah. I mean, really, really think about why that's a big deal. Yeah, no, every single person, every individual person that comes into the space grows us. It grows the entire community. And by us, I mean Solana builders. It's mm -hmm. it's not just jungle cats. And by doing it in this way, in a, a cooperative way, we we can all build stronger, essentially. Mm -hmm. And that maybe comes off a little <laughs> corny to say it that way, but that's exactly it's exactly what it is. We're 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 all working together on this. We're not in competition with each other just because somebody holds your project as compared to ours you know we're, mm -hmm. we want to build with you we want to build something completely completely unique you know yeah i i think that's really good i think it's i think because if you were to poll people like over 30 which i am um the average person who's over 30 would probably reply that nfts are stupid and they have no idea what they're all about yeah and uh, the flip side of that is they did poll people under the age of 18 and 22% of them knew what NFTs were and 16% of them owned NFTs. Yeah. You know, I keep saying that we're, first of all, those of us who are in NFTs and those of us who can't afford to be NFTs right now, cause it's not cheap. Um, we keep saying we're so early Oh yeah, and that, that's because we are, when you see the next generation growing up where NFTs have always existed, and that's just part of your investment portfolio. Now, NFTs are the next oil tycoon, if you ask yeah. me, or cryptocurrency is. At least. We, that, that gets into a larger, um, <laughs> what is my thesis for the investments I make, right? Yeah. And I, I believe, I agree with you that being in crypto and being, especially even in the niche of NFTs, there is a literal tsunami of money coming as the older generation phases out of the economy, the younger one comes in. What do we care about gaming? What do we care about building? We don't, we're not building the same companies higher. We're building out with new developments. So, mm -hmm. Yep. I, I couldn't agree with you more. And that's why those of us who are in this age group, I like to say the people who think that it's stupid right now, the fact that you're incentivizing your community to just try and get one of them in and see for yourself. It, it only takes like an hour of being in NFTs to go, oh, this is better. Like, yeah, was, like, oh, so, this is where gaming is going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, oh, exactly. It's like, oh, this is where social media is going. Oh, yeah, exactly. Like, Anybody so, that spent thousands of hours grinding a video game knows that, oh, if I, if I ground out the sword in World of Warcraft, what if there was a, a way that I could sell that? And it, I was the only one who ever owned it, you know? 
Exactly. It's it's beyond genius. And what if there was a way that I could publicly verify that I'm the owner of this sword on Twitter? Exactly. You know, it's part of your PFP all of a sudden. Like, this is, I don't know. Like, I just... It's, to us, that's incredibly obvious. And what we need to do is invite new people in that don't understand it yet. Thank you. Thank you. That's, <laughs> yeah, exactly. and, and, and this is why we say we are so early. And exactly. this is why we say have diamond hands. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> we are trying to lead the symphony over here and get everybody going in the right direction. That's, like, that's like, ju like, just wait. You know, not financial advice. Do your own research. Do what's best for you in your situation. Pay your bills. You know, don't <laughs> always get your, your house. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but but like, you know, I, uh, yeah, exactly. Like this right now, this dip that we're experiencing, it feels like a violent dip because you look at it in terms of percentages, and you see floors are down fifty percent. But you're like, yeah, but you know what's coming next. Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> I don't just, know if you've seen how quick these these floors can be chopped, but <laughs> exactly when when there's no supply, exhibit A, look at like the blue chips that exist now, like the monkeys. Yeah. You know, I remember like when they were sharing those spreadsheets on Twitter and you would see like the little bar chart for each section of the floor. Yeah. I remember when they were concentrated on like 40. And we were all yeah. like, oh, man, if someone just comes through, it's going to be 100 in a minute. Guess what? <laughs> yeah, now it's right. 200. Like, <laughs> you know, it only yeah, takes you, a couple of weeks. And when you're involved with these projects, and I know there's been a ton of new entrants, so a lot of people are getting involved as the pullback is coming. But when you're involved in these projects on the legs up, you see it, these these prices tear through paper floors. It's not paper hands anymore. anymore. It's the paper floor, right? Mm -hmm. like it, mm -hmm. it's, it's almost like it doesn't exist. There's only 5,500 lines. Do you know how many people it takes to get that many people in? Exactly. If one, exactly. if everybody invites one person, we, we don't have a supply anymore. Exactly. And the fact that your supply is already down 33% in the first week this is like, oh, man, like I want to see that on a spreadsheet because I could, I could pretty much guess right now what's about to happen, especially <laughs> when the concentration of your prices from floor to rares is so tightly coupled. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. We've had a ton of people buying up the rares. I, they're literally works of art in my eyes. So yep. it's everybody yep. buys the one they like, you know. But, but eventually, again, the big it, spur. Just, it's just a testament that even your commons look good. Yeah. Like, well, the big, you know. the big spur on the floor is coming when when people find out that holding a rare lion doesn't really affect, or it doesn't at all affect if you get a rare lioness. It's random. So mm -hmm. it, there's a gamification factor in there as well. Yeah. Um, and I, I I don't think many people have taken the time to look into the things that we're working on. But as we become more and more exposed and and larger and larger communities get involved it will become apparently obvious i think yeah we are early yeah exactly yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh, is there anything else you want to throw in here in this video before we wrap up no just the everybody stay with your diamond hands not financial advice but understand what is to come this this period this lull this present time is not what the future holds so Give it some time, hang out, build, be a part of something, be a part of something more than yourself and wait and see what happens. Couldn't have said it better. Yeah. All right. Well, pack leader, thank you so much for your time. We're going to wrap up here and for the viewers, thank you guys for making it to the end of this video. If you've liked this type of content, make sure you hit that subscribe button below because that tells YouTube, Hey, I like this kind of content. So with that being said, thanks for stopping by y'all. I'll see you in the next one.